Hey everybody, I'm Sheldon with SNS Horse Run. Today we got a real special case. About six, eight months ago, this horse's hoof looked like this. You can see it here in the picture. A little short story, he got a keratoma on that foot. The veterinarians had to go and surgically remove it. But today, at the beginning of today, it looked like this, you can see in this picture. So we've made a lot of progress, and today I'm gonna pull his shoes off. It's been about six, eight weeks, about seven weeks it's been since he got his last shoeing job, so I'm gonna pull his shoe off, get him trimmed up, and get his shoe put back on him. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you've seen some videos in the past, you guys probably recognize this horse. This is Pinto Bean. If you're new around here and you'd like to follow this horse's story, we put together a playlist back on, go to my channel page and go under playlist. You can find a, a playlist of all the videos I've done following this horse's progress. It's pretty interesting. Okay, real quick, you can see what I just pulled off of his foot, that's called Equipack. I put that on last time, I'm going to be putting it on again, so you can see how I apply that, and I'll explain why I put that on there right towards the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. And now, now that I got the old horseshoe off, I just need to get him trimmed up. While I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and talk at you. So, as you could expect, from for the first long while while he was recovering, Pinto Bean was on, on stall rest, the vets asked the owner to keep him not moving so much just to, to give him some time to heal but over this last cycle the veterinarians told the owner to go ahead and start exercising him whether it's lunging him or they said she could pony him which basically means if she's riding her horse she just has a halter on pinto bean and he just walks behind and that just helps get some blood flowing get some muscles built back up again so it's not such a shock when she's able to ride him again and so those of you that are that look at plenty of horses feet you might notice that the picture of his foot at the beginning of today looked kind of long and that was only seven weeks of growth and he really did i was impressed with the amount of hoof growth that we had this go around but that's just because the extra use he's using it a lot of good blood flow and so his foot grew a lot so that's that's a good sign that means his foot's healthy and as i'm getting him trimmed up today I felt like I may have even left him a little long in the past and that's just, I think that was just for me being chicken. When you have a foot like this, you just don't know how deep you can go. Anyway, what I'm getting at is that I did have to edit out some of the video that was just me pairing a little bit, rasping a little bit, nipping a little bit, trying to get it just perfect. And I'm still using the same principles we've talked about in the past in other videos. I mean, I'm finding my foot first with my hoof knife getting my frog trimmed up and then with my nippers you can see me right here I'll I'll nip the hoof wall back and I'll get the heels back to the widest part of the frog and so it's still using your same principles but you just get a little chicken when when a foot's all been having problems like this one something you'll notice with pinto bean is he has real thin hoof walls on his feet which makes it kind of challenging when putting your nails in there not to get a nail that's too far inward and, and going to cause problems going to get into sensitive tissue and that medial toenail you'll notice here in a second I'll mess with it and it was a little too far to the inside and it was probably bothering him but Pinto Bean's stoic enough that he didn't show us that and it's it's hard to know just because he doesn't let us know He's, he doesn't flinch or he just wasn't limping and so we just didn't know but you can see that that was festering um, which which makes it challenging something I'm doing with pinto bean is I use a This isn't the nail I use all the time, but with a horse like this with thin hoof walls, I use Capewell Five slim blades. I normally do use a slim blade. I use a different brand um, But the cape wells are really slim shank nails and so I use those just because they just displace the least amount of material and usually help me thread the needle and I can get the the nail right where it needs to be but with pinto bean on that medial toenail Apparently it was a little too close and it was bothering him. Like I said, he's stoic enough and didn't show us, but but uh, it definitely was bothering him. And that's unfortunate, but this time I'll try to make sure and, and make sure my nail's going into the white line so that doesn't happen. So here in a second you'll see me right there. I push down on the sole with my thumbs. And so for you beginner farriers or even not so beginner that's a trick you can use to make sure you're not going too far it's if it flexes under your thumb it's about warning you that if you take another swipe with your knife it, you're going to hit sensitive tissue so that's a trick you'll see me right there i'm doing it again pushing with my thumb and that i'm just checking to make sure i'm not gone too far if it flexes you've probably already gone too far but at least you're not into sensitive tissue yet 
I almost forgot to mention something I, I got for you guys today is about two weeks after I put the, these shoes on Pinto Bean, the owner was exercising him um, back home out, out in the pasture and was able to take a couple videos and she sent them to me and I included that right towards the end of this video so stay tuned for that right right at the end I uh, I show those two clips and it's put, sure did put a smile on my face to see him working without limping and hopefully it puts a smile on your guys' face. Okay, yeah. I'm going to do something a little different this time, something I've never done before. I always ask you guys to, to ask questions down in the comments, and I try to answer as many as I can, but I don't always get to them. So I thought I'd do something a little different. I'm going to pull up a, a question that gets asked often enough and try to answer it here. So this one's from Daniel P. He says, I'm new to the channel. It seems like horses need a lot of maintenance for their hooves. My question is, how do horses in the wild deal with this stuff? And I decided to leave... Uh, Mr. Jerry Linton's response on there just because I thought it was it was pretty accurate okay he says they just don't but wild horses do manage natural selection plays its role and unfortunately that's just how the circle of life is and I don't know if I need to but I'm going to expand on that a little bit <clears throat> so with a horse like Pinto Bean where he has a keratoma or he has something that causes him to limp in the natural world out there and let's say the BLM horses he's gonna be the slowest one in the herd and so when they get chased by predators whether it be a mountain lion or some coyotes or some wolves depending on where they are he's gonna be the slowest one and so he's probably gonna be the one that's that's gonna get eaten and not to be all doomy and gloomy but that's just how it is out there in the wild and while that's not something that's fun to think about that's how mother nature through natural selection makes species stronger Okay guys, while well, I'm getting this shoe cleaned up and ready for Pinto Bean again, you guys may have, may have already noticed I, since my last video I painted my anvil and I thought I would uh, share some pictures with you guys in the monotony of studying stuff for vet school. I had an epiphany and decided I needed to paint my anvil so with the help of some scotch tape and paper, my good friend Kent, I got it all taped off and my wife helped me make the stars so they were in the right proportion and stuff and we got it painted so thought you guys might think that was kind of fun and I know I have a lot of viewers out there that are from different countries I hope you guys are all proud of the countries you come from and I am sure proud to be American okay let's get back to what we're doing here so you'll see the modification I'm putting on this shoe is called an extended heel and it's normally something you would put on like a on a horse that's overreaching or maybe a heel horse the the heels on this shoe before I did that were just kind of trappy. Did it really matter? No, because I fill it full of Equipack, but this just makes it more of an appealing shoe to the eye. At least it makes it look better in my eyes. Um, does it change Pinto Bean's outcome drastically? Probably not. Or remember on this first burn, mostly I'm pulling back. You can see there's not a ton of smoke coming off of there. It's because I'm pulling back and getting my clip set in to start off with. And then towards the end of my burn, I'll push down and, and get it good and burned on there. Get it good and flat and a good merge between the shoe and the foot. Here I'm checking to see how my clips are fit there on the foot. If I got a good burn on my clips, if they're going to be set in the foot like they're supposed to. Then right there, as I'm walking back, you can see I'm looking the shoe or the foot actually kind of leaves a little outline there on the shoe and I can see how my fit is. So right here, apparently my medial branch needed to come out just a hair. And so that's what I'm doing right there on the anvil. I'm gonna bring it out with one good hit. And then my clip needed to, to be turned in, so right there I'm bending my clip in, and then I'll go give it one final burn, and, and it should be good to go.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put another pour-in pad on Pinto Bean. So this is the foam board. And I just kind of blow it out to get the dust out. And then that foam board has a sticky side on it. And when you're doing this, you got to make sure and set it down. Let that horse stand on it. Makes it stick to the foot real good so your pour-in pad doesn't flow out between the pad and the between the foam board and the shoe. So this long tip you see me putting on there actually has a swirling mechanism in there that mixes up the two parts. And so this stuff is kind of, it has two parts, kind of like when you're mixing epoxy. And so you squirt it out, I squirt it out on something, just something you're going to throw away. And it makes sure that both parts of the epoxy of the Equipack pour-in pad are coming out at the same speed. Then you just go ahead and squeeze out what you need underneath that pad. And then... I let it set up a little bit. You can just kind of touch it with your finger there until it starts to set up before I set it down so it doesn't all just drain right back out. I usually just go work on a different foot and then come back to it and take that board off. So there was a vet student there watching me that asked me what a pour-in pad does for Pinto Bean's foot. And so I took some time to explain it and I thought I'd leave that in for you guys that are also wondering the same thing. So basically the I'll kind of explain what we did. The clips there that hold the foot, just stabilize the front of that foot. And then the pad from the bottom, so the all the weight of the horse comes down the bony column, you know, down the cannon bone, fetlock, but the weight comes down the bone and then the lamina suspend that weight to the hoof wall. Uh -huh. And so we've taken off however much of that hoof wall. And it, it looks like it's just there, but there's that probably a scar that's still trying to heal all up in here. And so a lot of that lamina is missing. And so basically with that pad, I'll show you here in a second. And I just filled the inside with like gel basically. And so, so if you, they can get like laminitis in a foot like this and founder and because that weight is being held by less lamina. So they'll get inflamed and mad and, uh -huh. and get laminitis or but basically you're just like supporting the weight so it doesn't have to be suspended by less lamina that's supposed to because we've injured that not injured but because of the keratoma we took that off with the surgery okay so to make up for me not having a good after picture of pinto beans foot like i mentioned before i have some video clips here of pinto bean exercising out at his home place i hope that puts a smile on your guys' face seeing how well he's doing Okay guys, that's all we got for today. Appreciate you guys watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you next time.